The late 90s were truly a renaissance period for the JRPG. Final Fantasy VII had reached mass market in the West, and so other studios began developing even more titles in the genre, or marketing their games towards a more Western audience. One man who knew this more than anyone was Shuhei Yoshida. Yoshida-san, who is now president of Sony Worldwide Studios, worked with many developers during the PlayStation's life to bring quality titles to the console. When he wasn't fulfilling this role, however, he was very involved in making games. One of these games was The Legend of Dragoon. Yoshida-san wanted to see this Sony-developed game marketed as heavily as Final Fantasy VII was. I bring this up because, if you are watching this video, it is more than likely as a result of you playing this game when you were young. You can thank Mr. Yoshida for that. Another reason you might have clicked on this video was that there were parts of the game that confused the hell out of you. The Legend of Dragoon dealt with a vast timeline of different races, prophecies, mysteries, and mistaken identities. There's a lot to cover, so let's begin. In the beginning, there was the creator, Soa. Soa, seeing the vast darkness of creation, planted a seed. This seed grew to become the Divine Tree, which resided in the continent of Endiness in this new world. This tree bore many fruits, each of which gave creation to a new life form. Most of the creatures in the game are born from these fruits. As the fruits progressed, more and more advanced beings came into existence, such as the Gigantos, the Dragons, the Humans, and the Winglies. As the most recent life form to be born, the Winglies were the most advanced on the planet and took their place accordingly, believing in their god, the Archangel, who supported the Wingly way of life. Soon after the Winglies established their great kingdom, they learned of the 108th fruit. The Virage Embryo, or God of Destruction, was the final fruit to be born, with the sole purpose of destroying the world the Divine Tree created. The Winglies took quick action, and using their magical powers were able to separate the Virage Embryo's flesh and soul. The soul would be trapped in a crystal sphere to be worn by the Winglies' leader, Melbu Frama, while the flesh was bound and rose up into the sky to become the Divine Moon, or the Moon That Never Sets. This moon, as its name implied, would never move with the passing of the days. The moon was kept in check by Melbu's sister, Charl, through five signet spheres placed in five different cities. Unknown to Melbu, Charl also fashioned these spheres to weaken the power that Melbu obtained through the crystal sphere. While Melbu was okay with this, he created five divine moon objects in response should he ever require more power. These objects would be able to shatter the signet spheres. With the new power of the God of Destruction on their side, Melbu and the Winglies further subjugated the populace of Endiness. Humans and dragons had no right to live, he preached, and it was the mercy of the Winglies that suffered them to live at all. Dude was a dick. The Winglies were, however, aware of the power of the Nine Dragons, especially the Divine Dragon, the strongest of the dragons. They sealed this dragon in the Mountain of the Mortal Dragon for fear of being obliterated by his incredible power. This really pissed off the other dragons. They allied themselves with the humans, who also had immense power, however untapped it may be. With aid from Emperor Diaz of Gloriano, the dragons and humans declare war on the Winglies in what would be known as the Dragon Campaign. The seven dragons decided to sacrifice themselves, leaving behind their spirits to fuse with seven warriors who would in turn become dragoons. These seven warriors were Damia, Blue Sea Dragoon, Belzac the Golden Dragoon, Shirley the White Silver Dragoon, Kansas the Violet Dragoon, Suvale the Jade Dragoon, Zeeg the Red Eye Dragoon, and Rose the Dark Dragoon. Melbu brainwashed his people into fighting in the Dragon Campaign, and also employed Virages to fight the humans as well. Virages were part of the 108th fruit and were powerful creatures, but they were separated from the Virage embryo. The Winglies used special weapons like the Dragon Buster Sword and the Dragon Block Staff to cut down many of the Dragoons during the war. The conflict finally came to its conclusion when Zeeg, the leader of the Dragoons, stabbed Melbu through the heart, killing him. Before he died, Melbu cast a petrification curse on Zeeg. 
turning him to stone for 10,000 years. This marked the end of the war. The humans destroyed the Crystal Sphere, unleashing the Mirage Embryo Spirit on the world, and the Wingleys surrendered. Rose, the Dark Dragoon, was the only Dragoon to survive the conflict. She was distraught over losing her lover Zeke. Over the next few years, the Wingleys were hunted to near extinction by the humans. Which kind of sucks when you think about it. Melba was the dick, not the Wingley race. However, the world had another thing to worry about, and Rose had more work to do. Charl, who had survived the war, informed Rose that as a result of the Virage Embryo spirit being freed, every 108 years that would now pass, that spirit would inhabit the body of a child. This child would be known as the Moon Child, and any who come in contact with the Moon Child would become enthralled with them, and begin searching for the Divine Moon objects. This would allow them to release the moon that never sets from its bonds in the sky, and allow the Virage Embryo's spirit and flesh to reunite as the God of Destruction. Which isn't good. Rose is given a magical choker that grants her immortality for the next 10,000 years, makes sure that the Moon Child and anyone who has come in contact with them is killed. Thus, Rose became the Black Monster. As the legend goes, every 108 years the Moon glows red and the Black Monster will come to destroy the Moon Child. One hundred and seven Moon Children have been killed by the Black Monster, and the 108th is soon to be born. Rose has suffered long, even losing her beloved dragon partner, Michael. Michael? Michael the dragon! Before the moon child is born, Zeke is freed from the spell cast on him by Melbu thousands of years ago. Awaking in a whole new world and thinking Rose dead, he decides to live a peaceful life and settles in a village called Neat. Here he meets a woman named Claire, the daughter of a martial arts expert from the village of Rogue. They marry and have a son, who they name a civil war breaks out in the country of Serdia between the Kingdom of Basil and Imperial Sandora. While all of this drama is happening, the 108th Moonchild is finally born. Shanna is a princess of Mil Seso, one of two princesses with her twin sister, Luvia. You know what village just happens to be in Mil Seso? Yeah. Rose quickly rushes to Neat to carry out her duty as the Black Monster while the princesses pass through the village. The slaughter commences, as Rose leaves no survivors, but she loses the princess in the chaos. Before the Black Monster leaves, Zieg and his family escape, only for him and his wife to return to the village, leaving Dart alone. Zieg is about to challenge the Black Monster, using his red eye dragon spirit to transform into a dragoon. Suddenly, Zieg loses control of his body, and the spirit of Melbu Frama takes over his body as a result of the curse he put on Zeeg thousands of years ago. Quite a convenient curse, isn't it? Melbu, in Zeeg's body, takes off, while Claire, believing she could stop the monster, is killed at the hands of Rose. The black monster takes off to pursue the moon child further, and Dart re-enters the village in the morning to find his mother's body, and his father's dragoon spirit, which he takes with him. Rose never realized that the Moon Child had a twin sister, and in the confusion of Neat, the two babies were separated. Princess Luvia was taken aboard the Saint Luvia ship to be guarded from the Black Monster. However, this didn't end up so good for them. The Black Monster finds the ship, kills all of its crew, and also the princess as well. Believing the 108th Moon Child to be dead, Rose carries on, unaware that Shanna was the real Moon Child, not Luvia. The Saint Luvia turns into the Phantom Ship, and Shanna and Dart are both taken to the village of Celis in Serdia, where they grow up together as best friends. When Dart reaches adulthood years later, he sets out on a journey to find the Black Monster and take revenge for the destruction of Neat. Meanwhile, rumors around the world point to the return of Emperor Diaz, which can't be true, right? When Melbu re-emerged in Zeeg after the events of Neat, he decided to take on a new identity as the ancient Emperor Diaz. Okay, this can be confusing, so let's explain this once more. Diaz commanded Zeeg. Zeeg killed Melbu. Melbu cursed Zeeg. Thousands of years pass, Zeeg wakes up, Melbu takes over his body, 
and goes around telling everyone that he's Emperor Diaz. Whew. So Diaz is actually Melbu, and seeing that the Wingly race is in dire straits, with only a handful still existing in the world, Melbu decides to use his people to his advantage. One of the more interesting Winglies he finds is Lloyd. A powerful and idealistic warrior, Lloyd dreams of ending the persecution of his people, and to usher in a new age where the Winglies and humans can live in harmony. Melbu promises Lloyd that this can be achieved if he gathers the Divine Moon objects and brings them to him. What Lloyd doesn't know is that Melbu has a different plan. He learns that the Moon Child is still alive, in Shanna, and entertains the possibility of him merging with the God of Destruction to bring about the end of the world. Melbu is also the progenitor of the Serdian Civil War, as Emperor Dole is really acting on Melbu's orders as Diaz. One of these orders is to find the Moon Child, who is said to be living in the village of Celus. And here is where the game begins. Mission complete! 